This video is for people who are looking to take the STEP exam in 2026. This is a maths exam you got to do if you want to study maths at Cambridge. My name is Jamie and I study maths at Oxford, the better place, uh, and now I help students all across the globe who are looking to study maths at Oxford and Cambridge. If you're interested, link in the description below. Right, what should you be doing? You've got a year, or just under a year, and you've got the second exam, and you want to prepare. Loads of things you can be doing. I think before I talk about this, it's important to realise that actually, with the STEP exam, you have lots and lots of people who get scared off of it. They get scared off applying to Cambridge because they look at the STEP exam at this time, maybe a year before they have to do the STEP, and they go, oh my god, this exam looks impossible. And they look at the MAT, the maths exam you've got to do for Oxford, and they go, oh, okay, at least I can understand these questions. It's still pretty tricky, but it's a bit more manageable than STEP, so I'll apply to Oxford. Now, I'm not saying that that's wrong or you know, good or wrong, whatever, um, but I don't think that should be a reason to not want to apply to Cambridge. If we put like Oxbridge as like the goal, if, if your goal is just to get into Oxford or Cambridge, then as a, to study maths, I think using the step as a way to deter you um, because you want to get into one of these unis, I, I, think, I don't think it's great. I, I'm very much under the impression if you were to get into one uni, you would get into the other. You know, the pretty high likelihood, and vice versa. If you didn't get into one, you wouldn't get into the other. So. If you're scared of step, that's that's good. That's fine. That's completely normal. Not many people look at step a year away from doing it and go, oh, "This is fine." Um, but do appreciate that to get good at step, it's going to require a lot of work. In fact, if anything, applying to Cambridge for this reason could be a good way to tell you know to force you to become good at maths. Because if you're going to start at maths at university, you've got to be be pretty good at maths by that time. If you're forced to learn and prepare for step, you'll be put yourself in a really really good position for university. Anyway, what can you be doing over the next you know, 10 months or so to prepare yourself for STEP? Step one, sorry, the first step you should take um, is to learn as much A-level maths as you can. Um, I go on about this all the time, but teach yourself or you know, watch a bio course, whatever. Get a tutor if you, if you can't teach it to yourself, but just teach yourself um, A-level maths. Um, so in particular the pure stuff, so the majority of step questions are pure, um, teach yourself all the core content. So that means, when I say core content, that means A-level stuff. Because only then can you really start tackling step problems. And that's kind of the best way you're going to get good at step is by tackling step problems. I would say also, once you've kind of done the A-level stuff yourself, the, in particular the pure, I mean it's definitely worth looking at the stats and mechanics if, if those are your strengths, because obviously you can get marks there in the step. But I'd say focus on the pure at least to begin with, uh, just so you, you want to get used to um, the problem solving side. So one of the biggest things uh, I see students kind of struggle with, and I think it's the, not, not a bad thing that students struggle with, is timing. So you go from A-level maths where you're solving the problems in two minutes, you know. I'm sure if you're watching this video and you're planning on doing step, any A-level maths paper I give you, or at least like covering the content you've already covered in school, you can look at the question and almost instantly go, ah, okay, these are the def different things I need to do. With step, that's not quite the case. You'll look at the question and go, well, I've never seen a question like this before. You'll probably have to reread it a couple of times to make sure you've understood it. And what will probably happen the first time you do it is you're going to get really, really frustrated with yourself. Um, so if you haven't looked at a step paper before, this, this will be what happens. And if you have looked at step papers before, you've probably had this happen to you where you look at it and get really frustrated with yourself that you can't solve it straight away. That's the game. That's that, that is the beautiful game. That is what makes uh, the step such an amazing exam, is because you're forced to struggle. It really forces you to become a good mathematician. So you should definitely be in a position where you're willing to, to make that sacrifice of getting used to being or feeling like you're absolutely rubbish at maths. Um, step is an exam that will make you feel like that, but by the time you push through over the course of 10 months in your practice, you're going to feel, you're, well, you're going to be way, way better at step, ideally, um, provided you follow the following steps. Um, but you're going to look at step initially and be petrified of it. Don't let that turn you off applying to Cambridge. If you want to apply at Cambridge, you know, why would you? It's Cambridge University. Ugh. Um, but if you, seriously, if you do want to apply to Cambridge, don't let the step put you off. The step is there as a great way to 
prove to yourself that you're worthy of Cambridge. Um, because Steph is not an easy exam, right? If you can do well enough on Steph, you're clearly good at maths. Um, so it is a bit difficult to say this because of course you've got a year left and you're like, well, how do I know I'm gonna get better in that year? Well, to be honest, the same is then true for, for Oxford. Like, okay, you could get an offer from Oxford, but like, I think, let, let's just remember that you're not gonna survive Oxford if you're not good at maths. You're not gonna survive Cambridge if you're not good at maths. So if you can't get up to a level by, where by the end of year 13 or the final year of your studies, you're good enough to, to get essentially grade S and step, probably not good enough for either Oxford or Cambridge. So, you know, it, it, I would say that don't let the step scare you. In fact, be grateful the step is there as a great resource for um, that advanced mathematics and advanced problem solving. Now, what can you do to prepare? So, you've learned the A-level course, you're, you're you know, full steam ahead. I would say, look at, um, it depends on how much experience you have with that type of problem. So if you've done things like BMO before, that, that, that's great. If you haven't, that's another set of resources. So BMO1 to begin with. So um, BMO1, where the problems are slightly now longer than, well, they're not multiple choice, I'm like the, the senior maths challenge. Um, but those problems can be quite a good resource. Um, again, they're not ones that you can solve in just two minutes by looking at the question. You'll have to experiment, play around with a few things um, and that sort of thing. And then um, I'd say another good resource is Stephen Sickles' book. You can buy this on, uh, so you can get this for free even uh, as a PDF on the Cambridge website. Uh, things called Advanced Problems in Mathematics or something along those lines. Um, but th that's a really good book for bridging the gap between A-level maths and the way that you learn things to university maths. Uh, and step and obviously the step support program the foundation modules that they have on their website that's good i mean i think i've heard mixed mixed reviews from people about them but uh, you know that's up to you but i'd say these, there are so many resources for you to start with now i'd say first get get your a level maths under your belt that is super important uh, and i've talked about it before it's a great filtration process you've still got a few weeks left of the summer just teach it to yourself right if you if you can't put yourself through the time to do that how on earth do you think you're going to survive four years of a more intensive maths and even far more difficult maths at university? So, you know, uh, you put yourself through it and, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to have to learn it anyway. If you can do it now whilst you have a bit more time on your hands, all the better. Um, and then that gives you more of the year to put your head down and really focus on step because it's not something you can sleep on. It's not something you can just pre prepare for overnight. It takes months and months, I'd, I'd say perhaps even years and years to get to a level where you can be really confident looking at step. I've obviously done lots of maths for the last gajillion years. Uh, I now can look at a step paper and I've almost got to that level, of, I have pretty much have got to that level where most questions I can look at and know straight away, this is how to do it. And that's just because I've done so many of these problems, I've become hardwired to go, okay, spot patterns, but also kind of get a feel for the, the style of, you know, the format of the way that they ask the problems, the, the kind of common themes, those sorts of things. Um, that's the aim, that's, that's what you should be aiming for, is to get to a level where you can look at a set question and like with your A-level maths, you can go boom, that's exactly how I solve this. Now, that's going to feel like a distant, you know, that's going to feel like a very, very far away, but that's the goal, that's the overall goal. Now, uh, what else can you be doing? Once you've kind of read through these books, you've had to go a few BMO problems, whatever, so just start doing step problems. Like, <laughs> if I was, I've, I've said this before, if I was to give one tip, to, okay, I was only allowed to make one video on YouTube, where you have one tip about getting good at and getting better at maths, it'd be do more maths. Simple as that, do more maths. If you want to get good at maths, do more maths. It's, it's so simple. If you want to get an A star in maths A level and further maths A level, I'll tell you this for free. You don't need a maths tutor. You don't need um, you don't need to watch a billion YouTube videos. What you need to do is just do a bunch of questions. If you get stuck on those questions, then yeah, maybe look out you know for help, whatever. But I'd say do a bunch of questions. So um, Get the textbook, learn the content, read it through, do a few, go work through a few of the examples, and then just do question, 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 question. Same is true for step. It's a little bit more difficult though for step because of course with A-level, they use the same kind of questions every few years, they recycle the types of problems they ask, whereas with step, you can get a question today that won't really ever appear again, or you know, you, you might see 10, 15 years down the line and they rephrase it slightly. So, one thing that I think is important is just to do that. That's more the reason to do even more problems. Um, so preparing for step is, is hard, it's intensive. But I think the reason they have that is A, to, to filter out the good students from the excellent students, but also B, to really, really test students as to whether or not they want to study maths at Cambridge. Because as I say, we're going to be doing four years 
of intensive mathematics whilst you're at Cambridge. It's far harder than the maths you're learning at the moment in school. Um, you know, I hate to break it to you, maths does go beyond what you're currently learning. It's going to be far harder, far more challenging. If you're not, not ready for that, if you can't do step, you can't prepare for step, you can't put yourself through the intensity of that, you're, not, you're probably not good enough for Cambridge. So with, with doing better at the, sorry, with, with, the, with preparing for the step, the thing that's going to get through, you through it is enjoyment. If you're enjoying the problem solving, if you're enjoying, if you find yourself hungry to learn the solution, hungry to understand the trick behind a problem, that's going to be what gets you um, through step and gets you, you know, a, a great offer at the end of it. Anyway, that's my kind of generic advice for between now and, well, step, June. So learn a of maths, um, read through the, you know, the CICLOS book, uh, go through the foundation modules, go through, um, do some BMO problems, and then obviously then just start with step problems. So start with step one, obviously that's discontinued now. That's a good way to get you used to at least to the format, the style of step, uh, and then obviously like the slight step up in difficulty. Um, so I'd say step one is still far harder than A level further maths. Um, but get, your help, get yourself used to step one. And I'd probably say do every single step one question before you start to look at step two. Do every single step two question. Step three, do every single uh, step three question. Um, and I'd say maybe if you want to leave some past papers, you know, leave the last couple of years for closer to the time. Um, but realistically, um, if you, you know, by the time you've gone through all those past papers, you're first going to be drained of energy. Um, but also, um, yeah, that, that will take you some time to go through. So don't worry about then, you know, leaving some past papers because there aren't that many. There are so many step past papers. Obviously, you only answer like four to six, six questions in the exam. So there's, in each exam paper, there's two exams worth of like questions sort of thing. Anyway, uh, if you are someone who's looking to study at Oxford or Cambridge, my name is Jamin, I do study maths at, or I did study maths at Oxford, and as I say, I now help students who are looking to study maths at Oxford and Cambridge, and I work with students uh, kind of very intensively, students who are doing well in school maths, but looking for the next step to, you know, to start, try and study maths at uh, Oxford and Cambridge, and maybe struggling with the admissions process, so I help students with step, uh, those sorts of things. And over 80% of the students I work with end up receiving Oxbridge offers. So if that's something that you'd be interested in, you'd be interested in that additional support, do get in touch. You can book a call with me, uh, a free call, or we'll just have a chat, try and understand what it is that I can help you with and see if I can help you with your, with your journey to getting an Oxbridge offer. Link in the description below. I'll leave a video on screen where I give my top tips for the M80. So if you're applying for uh, Oxford, here are some tips and advice for you if you're doing the M80. I'll catch you over there.